instead of completing your warm up in your composition book, today your warm up will be completed on page 253 in your workbook. Your job is to graph and label these points on the grid provided from page 253. So get the points A through F plotted on your grid. This lesson is a digital lesson, so if your teacher has opened up your Great Minds account, you can log in there or just take notes as you follow along with the video. Choose a quadrant and draw a letter or move a picture into that quadrant. So I'm going to use the picture tool and the shoe. It says, then reset your screen and draw a letter or move a picture into a different quadrant. So if I get rid of the shoe, you can see that the car has shown up. If I move its quadrant, you can see that it changes where those extra pictures are located. What do you think the letter or picture should look like in the blank quadrant? So if we were to put it here, what would that shoe look like? Is it facing the correct way? How would we make it look? You can see the way that the shoes are facing each other. So this one is pointed to the left. I believe that this shoe should be pointed to the right. This one is right side up, but this one is upside down. So I believe this shoe should be pointed to the right. And upside down. It should look like a mirror image of the old shoes. Drag point A into quadrant one that is close to the to an axis, but not on an axis. So this isn't close to an axis, but we want it close to one of the axes. Then try to drag point B into quadrant three that has reflections that match the reflections of your point in quadrant one. So we're dragging this into quadrant three, but we want it to match the reflection. So it should be still close to the axis. And you can see here that the triangles and circles line up. Keep your points, then try again with point C in quadrant one, but not close to either axis. So I'm gonna put it way out off in the distance between the two axes. Then try to drag point D into quadrant three that has reflections that match the, re the reflections of point C. So it should be in the similar location. And you can see that they line up and fill in those dots there. This one is at about nine nine. This one is at about nine negative nine. This one is at around negative nine negative nine. So there might be some kind of relationship between a point and where it's reflected. This says point B is a reflection of point A across the Y axis. How is the distance from the y-axis to point A related to the distance from point B to that y-axis? Well, the distance of points A and point B are both 7 to the y-axis. They both have the same distance. What happens to point B 
when point A is on the y-axis. So if we move it to the y-axis, point A and point B both have the coordinates 0, 4. And Y, when it is on the axis, if it's reflected, it is still on the axis. Point C is a reflection of point A across the x-axis. How does the reflection across the x-axis compare to a reflection across the y-axis? These points are connected by a vertical line rather than a horizontal line segment. The distances still show the same pattern. Here it says, use what you have learned to graph reflections. Plot each point from the table in the coordinate plane. Find its reflection across the x-axis, then complete the table. So A is the point 4, 5. And B gets reflected across the x-axis. So that distance, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, needs to be the same on the other side of the x-axis. And they're creating a vertical line segment. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in the opposite direction across that x-axis. Its coordinates are the point 4, negative 5. Now we can graph C. C is at negative 5, 7. So negative 5, positive 7. And C is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 from the x-axis also, but in the opposite direction. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven and that has the coordinates of negative five negative seven e is at negative eleven negative three so f should be three from the axis as well but going the opposite direction so above negative 11, positive 3. G has the coordinates 9, negative 6. So H should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 above that x-axis. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And it has the coordinates 9, 6. Now we can check our answers and you see that the distance here matches, the distance here matches, here and here, and they all create those vertical segments. Now we get to do the same type of thing, but this time reflect, reflecting across the y-axis. So 4, 3, that's 4 right and 3 up. Going across the y-axis, that was 4 away, so we need to go 4 away on the other side, which has the points negative 4, 3. C is at negative 7, positive 6. So that was 7 away from the y-axis. So we need to go 7 away in this direction. 
and there are the coordinates there. You can see it was negative 7 and positive 7. Those are opposites. Negative 5, negative 4. So that's 5 away. So we need to go 5 away in the opposite direction. Negative 5 and positive 5 are opposites. 3, negative 6. That is 3 away from the y-axis. So it needs to be 3 away on the other side. 3 and negative 3 are opposites. Plot a point at 7, negative 3. That is 7 right and 3 down. Reflect A across the y-axis. That would go across the y-axis. It should be at negative 7, negative 3. Then reflect point B across the x-axis to point C. So if it's going across the x, that's 1, 2, 3 from the x. So 1, 2, 3 from the x there. 3 and negative 3 are opposites. What happens when you reflect point A across the x-axis? Then reflect point B across the y-axis. So if we moved it and we went here, and then we moved that and we reflected this point, meaning if we changed it, it would still be in the same location for point C. When you reflect across both axes, the result is the same. Now use what you have learned about reflections. The point AB is plotted negative A, positive B. Well, negative A would tell us to go to the left, and positive would tell us to go up. It should be the same distance from the y-axis and in line with the point, creating a horizontal segment. Now use what you've learned about reflections. The point AB is plotted. Plot A negative B, or A the opposite of B. So the x-coordinate is still the same at A, but the b is the opposite, the y value is the opposite. So we're going to go across the x-axis to get the opposite value. So the point is plotted Point the opposite of the a value, that's the x value, is different. So we need to slide along the x axis the opposite direction, but the b value stays the same. So we're crossing that y axis. The a is the opposite, that's that first coordinate, and the b stays the same. Here, both of them are opposites. So instead of just going here or going here, when both of them are opposites, it's reflected across the x and the y axis. So it should be over here in quadrant one. Please make sure that you have any notes taken for this lesson or that you completed it digitally.